the two daughters are also with the party. Uh, Radha, she's the elder daughter. Uh, she's probably in her early 40s, although we don't usually try to guess at the age of a lady. <laughs> she's tall and slender, and she has light brown hair. I don't think we've seen much of the family on any of the coverage so far. Uh, incidentally, uh, the elder daughter, Radha, is married to the director of the Kiev Opera. And the younger daughter, Yulia, who is the wife of the editor of the government newspaper Izvestia, uh, is also in the party, but again, we haven't <laughs> seen very much of them either. Uh, I know uh, from uh, my information in the Coon Rapids area that there are plans for the young people tomorrow, but they haven't been announced yet. Perhaps we'll get them in the news tomorrow. Len? I believe Jim has something to say here. Well, Len, I just want to point out that uh, these, uh, as you said, this is an unscheduled appearance in front of the Ford Des Moines Hotel, and these are not the radio television microphones he's talking into. We have not lost our audio. These are simply radio, uh, rather I should say, movie cameramen, sound cameramen, uh, asking him for an interview. So. Uh, <coughs> Our coverage is proceeding according to schedule, and uh, this has been an unscheduled stop uh, for the benefit of the photographers and the movie cameramen, sound cameramen particularly. Jim, perhaps we could say this is just another evidence of the organized confusion that most of us have experienced here the past several days. I think it's more evidence, too, that uh, as somebody remarked earlier this morning, that Mr. Khrushchev himself is taking more control of this tour uh, than he did earlier. Uh, there was more and more evidence uh, in California that he was trying to have his way a little more than he apparently had in the past. And uh, some of the newsmen who are accompanying the party are saying now uh, that they wouldn't be surprised if this uh, indication crops up more during his tour here in Iowa, where there actually will be more chance for him to uh, suddenly take off in his own direction and uh, talk to somebody that he may see at the side of the road. Uh, more chance to do that here than there has been so far. Uh, this, of course, will give his security people many, many more gray hairs, uh, but, uh, of course, he'll get to see more of the America that he actually wants to see. Uh, this, uh, in front of the hotel now, is some indication that uh, he has just decided that he wants to talk to these uh, newsreel and uh, cameramen, and so he and Mrs. Khrushchev are simply doing it. Len, it might be mentioned, too, that if he does want to speak with the real people of America, he'll get his chance tomorrow because he's going to be out in some of those fields, and there are going to be a considerable number of farmers around. Of course, his Iowa host, uh, Bob Garst of Coon Rapids, has long made plans to this effect and is very anxious to have his guest, namely Mr. K, do a little uh, visiting with some of the neighbors, shall we say. And if he does visit with those neighbors, he will truly see a demonstration of uh, men, farmers, uh, workers, and others, uh, the best salesmen we have for democracy, Len? Yes, I'm, I'm glad that he can talk to them. I think we should point out, in all fairness, uh, now after what I said earlier, uh, that our American security people say that the tight security so far has been the doing of the Russian security people and not ours. We should throw that in just to be fair. Uh, the uh, Impromptu interview here apparently is over. Now he's going to address the uh, crowd in general, apparently, a little bit. A very few people are going to understand much of that Russian. But uh, now he's turned around and is um, headed in the direction of the uh, lobby. And here he comes into the lobby of the Hotel Fort Des Moines, uh, where he and his party will put up during their Des Moines stay. Len, I talked with uh, Joe Whalen, the manager of the Ford Des Moines Hotel, and he said that uh, the Russians won't actually have to register in or sign to register as such. And here we see uh, Mr. Whalen, the general manager of the Ford Des Moines Hotel, giving the official greeting. Uh, Joe said that uh, they won't have to stop to register. They will be registered in by the hotel staff. And now Mr. Khrushchev is shaking some hands there in the lobby of the Ford Des Moines Hotel. He also said complete preparations have been made to handle all the luggage and... Uh, that everything was prepared for this visit of, oh, roughly 113, I believe, in the official party. He is certainly uh, getting closer to the people here in Des Moines immediately. Uh, I'm sure this is an unscheduled bit right here, too. There are some people in the lobby wanting to see Mr. Khrushchev, and Mr. Khrushchev decided he'd shake hands with them, and I saw a broad grin on his face. Apparently, this pleased him very much, as it should indeed. Uh, here we're going by the registration desk, where he will not stop, as Jim pointed out. When you get to be a VIP, you don't register for yourself. 
And he will go up now to the presidential suite and uh, prepare for his tour of Des Moines, which comes up uh, at about 3.30 this afternoon. Here is Mrs. Lovelace and Mrs. Khrushchev outside the hotel. Somebody's given Mrs. Khrushchev a nice bouquet of flowers, and they're standing there for picture taking. Lynn, this really brings back some memories. That uh, visit we made to Russia some years ago was punctuated rather repeatedly with the presentation of big bouquets of flowers. Personally, I'm rather glad to see that Mrs. Khrushchev, who is reputed to be a very charming lady, did receive those flowers because I'm sure it'll make her feel at home and make her feel very kindly toward uh, the friendliness and the hospitality of we Iowans. Well, from what we've seen, uh, definitely, I don't believe the Khrushchevs can say that the Des Moines welcome was cold. I don't believe it uh, can be described as warm either. We've seen much warmer welcomes here in Des Moines, but it definitely was not cold. I think it was uh, pretty much in line with what the president has been asking, that we be polite, cordial, and welcome him sincerely, and be neither hot nor cold. And now the crowd's breaking up uh, outside the uh, Fort Des Moines Hotel. Barricades are still up. There are some of those buses that brought the newsmen in from the airport. I'm sure they are emptied of newsmen now and that uh, they are swarming around trying to get what pictures they can. Is that a balloon man? Yes, sir. We can't have a crowd without one of those balloon men. I wonder if they have those in Russia, Herb. Well, they've got a lot of things, but I don't specifically remember balloon men, and I'm rather sure they wouldn't have them in that number, because I've seen the second one now, Lynn. Herb, uh, did you happen to notice that at the airport when Ambassador Lodge got off the plane just before Loveless, uh, Governor Loveless was uh, introducing uh, Mr. Khrushchev, he whispered something, uh, to one of the American in the party and said, uh, show them the number of swimming pools you have here in Iowa. Apparently he noticed some out of the plane window, and I believe that he is going to see one out at the Garst Farm tomorrow. Yes, but it should be added, this is not necessarily typical. Uh, every farm does not have a swimming pool. However, there's a, a real fine one out there at the Garst Farm, and he will undoubtedly see some other things out there at the farm itself that will be very impressive to him. But uh, primarily, we must keep in mind that the major objective of his visit here is to see American agriculture in action. And there's no place in the world where he can see it as well as he can here in Iowa. And as we said earlier, Mr. Khrushchev must achieve better food production in his own country in order to meet the needs, the wants, and the demands of his people. Most of us who have been watching the preparations for this event have been uh, astounded that the uh, police and the security people have allowed uh, the general public to uh, congregate on that parking ramp across the street from the hotel the way they have. Uh, now that is a really sizable, <coughs> excuse me, sizable collection of people uh, on that unusual building just across from the Hotel Fort Des Moines and uh, there is no way on earth that I know of uh, to make sure that all those people over there are, are safe people uh, speaking in a security sort of way. Uh, nevertheless, all the floors of the parking ramp uh, have been pretty crowded with people. On the very top, there have been some security guards uh, who have been watching things. Uh, but uh, we are surprised that they have let people congregate on that open-type building the way they have. Uh, incidentally, uh, it's rather amusing, on the circular uh, ramp part of the building, there are cables going from floor to floor and there are people uh, intermingled with these cables and it looks for all the world like we have a large number of caged people uh, watching Mr. Khrushchev arrive here in Des Moines. I hope the uh, Russian photographers who are along uh, don't uh, send a picture of these caged people uh, back to Russia for propaganda purposes. You can be almost certain that they'll make some use of those pictures. Uh, Len, you made reference to the surprising uh, turn of events with the people being so close and with, of course, so many people on that ramp. Uh, as you know, uh, we've had some experience with presidential visitations here. Uh, I've always marveled at the job that the security people do. They seem to me are the most efficient group of people on Earth. The job they do in the protecting of their particular uh, guest or responsibility. And I suspect that there were more security people among the crowd than what you and I would normally realize. Uh, certainly, uh, they have proved again in this tremendous challenge that has been theirs, they've done a good job of protection up to now. 
Now, of course, we're seeing some of the cars uh, being let back into the stream of traffic as these streets are open, Locust Street and 10th Street. And Len, don't you imagine that quite a few of the people we see that are still standing inside the lobby of the Ford Des Moines and, and those that remain across the street are waiting uh, for the approximate uh, schedule of an hour and five minutes from now when he's scheduled again to leave the hotel to go, the, uh, go to the Des Moines Packing Company and the John Deere Works. 